Hey guys, it's Jake and welcome to day 17 of learning to program in Ruby. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I have tutorials on a bunch of different softwares and how to program in different languages. Okay, to get started we are going to be building a program that finds all the prime numbers between two numbers that we give. So let's go ahead and drop this in right here and we're going to hit enter. It says give me two numbers and I will tell you all the numbers between them that are prime. To get started, what is your starting number? So let's go ahead and start at the number 100. We're going to hit enter. It says excellent. And what is your ending number? So we'll type in 1000 and hit enter. And then it gives us all the numbers that are prime in between that. So 101, 103, 107, 109. And to test this, we can just go ahead and pull it in again. And we'll do um, all the numbers between 1 and 30. And you can see that. 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 20, 19, 23, 29. So let me go just go ahead and show you what it looks like in the editor real quick. And I'll go over this real fast and then we'll actually go by line by line and type in everything. So just for now, just try and follow me along as I tell you what's going on here. Because this is a, there's a little more going on in this than we typically have done in the past. So it says, give me the two numbers. And again, you don't even really need to put this communication here. It says, give me the two numbers and I'll tell you the numbers between them that are prime. Puts to get started, what is the starting number? So here we do a num equals gets dot to integer. That'll turn the number that they put into an integer. And then puts excellent, what is the ending number? And we're going to put that as well. So now we've saved those variables as num and last, those two numbers. Now, if you come down here, this is just a, here are the results. This doesn't do anything but output this. Uh, but it says, while number is less than last, we're going to be running this uh, loop right here. And so we know that this program will stop once it gets to the last highest number that we are putting in. And it says prime flag equals true. So we're setting this to true. We're just assuming every number that it checks is going to be true. And then we're just setting x equal to 2 here. And you'll see why in a minute. And then we come through a loop here. And it says while x is less than the number divided by 2, then we're going to run this program here. And that is if number modulo x is equal to 0, we're going to prime flag it as false. So what that does is if a number is uh, divided divisible by 2, because that's what we're starting out as is 2, then we know that that number that it's checking, which is that first one that we put in, we know that it is going to be false. And then the prime flag will change to false. And down here you can see if prime flag is true, then it's going to be puts a prime number there b. So it'll plus that number, um, and then it'll write in the integer that it's currently at. Um, I, I know it sounds a little confusing, but as we go through step by step, it'll actually make sense to you. But we're going to plus the number, and then we're going to check again. We're going to reinsert this loop, and it's going to say if number right here is the is the new number is the first number that we're starting with. So in our example, we started at 100, and it's going to do modulo x is equal to zero which x starts at 2, then the prime flag will be false. So then it'll be done with that loop. So if you see down here, it says num plus 1 is it's going to add 1 to our starting number, which was 100. So then it starts over in the loop, and it goes 101, and then it runs 101 through this loop right here. And the reason that we modulo this at the beginning, or why we divide this by 2, is that we only need to do half of a number. For example, if we have 100, we are going to hit our 2, the first one we do, 2 divided by 50. Like half half of your number, you will already have run into the divisible that it's divisible by. Let's see, if we go higher than half the number, then we can't divide it by anything uh, anymore. Say like, if it's 100, see 51 times a number less than 2 isn't going to work. So that's why we only need to do half of what our current number is at. Alright, so let's get started in the editor. We're going to go ahead and skip the niceties and the introduction, and we're just going to go ahead and get our variable from the user. So go ahead and create the num, and let's do gets dot to integer. And that's just 2i, and I say integer just to kind of to help you remember uh, the, what these commands are. Now below that, we're going to get the second number, and we're going to make that one last. And we're going to do, and again, you can name these variables anything you want, uh, but we do this so that we can know what each one of these variables is related to. So last is equal to gets.toInstrip. 
Now below that we're going to start our first while loop and we're going to make it so that while our number is less than or equal to our, uh, our last, we are going to keep running this. We're going to set our prime flag as true and we're going to go through this. We're going to put a loop within a loop and you'll see what I mean in a minute. But uh, we're going to set our prime flag to true and go ahead and go below that and we're going to make x equal to 2 starting. Again, we're going to put this all within inside this while, so keep that end down there. Now below that, we're going to start our while loop that will check and do our math for us. So we're going to do while x is less than or equal to our num divided by 2, we shall run the loop that's below. Now below that, we're going to write our if condition and it'll be if number modulo x is equal to zero, then we're going to set our prime flag to false. Prime flag to false. Now if our prime flag is false, then we will break out of our loop. And that's what the break command does. You can see it changed colors here. And then we can bring this end up right here to clean it up. And then below that, we're, we can write x is equal to x plus 1. Or you can write it shorter hand, and you can do x plus equal to 1. And it does the exact same thing. So you see that this while is still, uh, it's still going. And this, this while is enclosed right here. And we will jump out of that while if our prime flag ever equals false. And that way we don't have to check every single number. So if it's false on 2, then we don't need to check for 3. And, and that saves a lot. Now I can actually demonstrate what happens if you remove this break right here. And you just keep looping through. And you just keep it just keeps returning false. Um, and you'll see that it's 10 times faster to make sure to have that break there. Because you don't have to check all the numbers. Then you come down here and it says x plus uh, you add 1 to your x, so now x becomes 3, and because you're jumping right back into this again. And so x, you're coming in and you're going to run this while loop again. And now that we found that the number is not prime, or if we've made it all the way through this while loop, and, we have, and we've maintained our true prime flag, we can come down here and we can say if prime flag Then we can come below that and we can write puts anything you want really, a prime number. Make sure that you have those quotations in. And then what we want to do is make sure you have a space there. But we're going to do plus and we need to add in what our current num is at. So it's going to be num2 underscore s. So that's our return here. If you come back up here, it's the gets.2. It'll be our num, and then we do this just to return a actual string. And then we need to add one to what num is currently at. So we're going to write num equal to one. Num plus equal one. And then you can come down below that and type end. And that will be the actual end once it comes through all of these other loops. So now that you've added one to your num, what you do is you come back up to this loop because num is still currently less than last even after you've added one. So if we started at 100 and then we went to 101 or even 102, it's still less than last. So this while condition is still true. So it's going to come right back up into this loop and it's going to set prime flat equal to true and then it's going to go through all these things that we just did while x is less than uh, half of our number we're going to run this if condition and if number modulo x is equal to zero then we will make our prime flag false if ever we hit a false prime flag we will break that loop and move on to the next which is if prime flag puts that number so the current number will then be at 101 or 102 depending on where we're at and then it will end and then we will plus one to it and we will bring 103 up 
103 is still less than the last number we put, which was 1,000, and we will run this again. So there's all these little tiny steps that we go through, but uh, the computing power is, is that, I mean, they can just do this almost instantly. And so we're going to save this, and I will show you. And we're going to save it as um, primer2. And we'll pull in start command prompt with Ruby. And you see here, it doesn't ask you the question. It's just blank right here, but we know what it does. So we're just going to type in 100, and then we're going to type in 1,000, and then it'll give us all our prime numbers between 1 and 1,000. Now, let's go ahead and pull this in again, and I will show you the difference between our break and not having it so that it's going to check every number and this is again this is this is why you need to know best practices in programming so that you can save tons of computing power and time and energy and so uh, let's pull it in one more time and we're going to set this to one as our starting number and we're going to make that ten thousand and then we're going to hit enter and see that it added all that you could see that it was it was it was doing the calculations now let's come in here and get rid of our break so that it's going to check every single number up to half even if it results in a false and we can just uh, comment that out so it's not red hit save and now watch how long it takes go ahead and hit enter start at one make it ten thousand and there we go see so it took about three times as long so that's why it's good to optimize your programs every time that you can. So I'm going to leave this up on the screen while I close here so that you can get, make sure to have your syntax right. You can see the whole program up. Uh, my name is Jacob Williams. If you haven't subscribed to me already, please go ahead and subscribe. I do programming and software tutorials, 3D modeling, and, some, and GIMP. And we're going to be doing JavaScript here in the next uh, month or two. So if you're interested at all in any of those, please go ahead and subscribe. And I will talk to you later. Thank you and have a good night.